Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm the founder and host, Ms. Genesis Amaris Kemp. And with me today in the hot seat is Carrie Schmidt. And here's a bit about Carrie. So Carrie is definitely a woman business owner. She is the CEO of Infinite Solutions, puts the soul into solutions by transforming lives personally and professionally, transformational life and business success coach, Carrie teaches a proven, reliable, and repeatable system of transformation that helps her clients overcome limiting beliefs, gain clarity of purpose, and the confidence to take action on their dreams. Carrie transformed her own life as a single mother, raising a son on her own. She spent 10 years climbing to the top of the corporate ladder and achieving everything she ever worked for. Unfortunately, Carrie still felt a longing for something greater. She embarked on a spiritual journey of a personal discovery and development that led her to research the fundamentals of psychology, neuroscience, and quantum physics. She ventured to LA and studied under Mary Morrissey at the Life Mastery Institute to become a certified life mastery consultant. It became her passion to help raise human consciousness and teach what she learned as an adult to teens and young adults who need to understand the power of the mind. Today, Carrie offers life coaching programs, business consulting services, and is releasing her first book, Behind the Scene, which teaches the seven-step life timeline system of transformation. Her vision is to reach teach and transform over 1 million lives globally by helping raise human consciousness. So without further ado, please welcome Carrie Schmidt to GEMS Podcast. Woo woo. Hi, Genesis. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be on here with you. My pleasure, Carrie. And I hope I did you justice by reading your bio. You did. You did a great job. (laughs) So Gary, let's get to know you a little bit better. I'm going to give you two options. We mm-hmm. could do a rapid fire game or we could break the ice up front. Which would you like to do? I like rapid fire. Let's go. Woo! Okay. Question numero uno. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, read minds. <laughs> Question two. Dream car. What is it? Oh, that dream was- car. car. Um, the new Cadillac, what is that? The Escalade, I think. Oh. All blacked out. I'm I'm like an all blacked out girl. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I, my dream car is a Lamborghini black on black with blue neon lights because that's my favorite color. Oh, cool. Mine would have purple neon lights because that's <laughs> mine. <laughs> Three. Are you a coffee or tea drinker? coffee, but I've started to drink tea with fresh lemon and all natural organic honey, you know, from sourced locally because it's like a detox for you. So coffee and then tea if I'm feeling good. Ooh, okay. Four. Are you that cook or are you just going to do that DoorDash or Uber Eats? Oh girl, I am the best cook ever. I throw down in my kitchen. I have like 10 star chef recipes. You come to Carrie's house and it's getting cooked up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to have a throw down with Carrie Smith, kind of like yes. a throw down with Bobby Flay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi. If you could go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? Oh my gosh. I would tell myself that everything's energy and to study energy, vibration, and frequency, the power of your mind, the power of your thoughts, your feelings, and that you control your reality and you contribute to co-creating your reality. And that's actually what I want to teach teenagers and young adults is the power of your mind and body. It, it It's amazing. And I think we've been stuck in this, I call it the program, the matrix, whatever you want to think about it as we've been conditioned for our lives to live a certain way, follow certain roles, do certain things. Um, But when you start to understand, you know, quantum physics and just how energy works, I I dove down the rabbit hole. (laughs) (laughs) 
but that is amazing advice because some people say they would they wouldn't go back and change anything and I'm like what I would definitely tell my younger self to do something different because I would avoid that hell of a relationship I was in before I married my now husband yeah amen I I, I write about that in my book I write about a nine-year relationship that was uh it was just bad, but I do believe that you go through certain, um, seasons of life. There's a reason for every season. And it, it's, you know, I, I think we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And so spiritually we're here to experience, endure, learn, grow, evolve, um, from those certain situations to, kind of rise higher and rise above. And that's why wisdom is so key. And it's like, you don't, you don't become wise until after 40. And then as you, as you experience, and as you go through these situations in life, that's when you learn and you learn how to maybe control your emotions differently, or, you know, work on your mindset because it's everything, everything's energy. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. And I love how you said there's always a reason for the season that you're in. Cause I was like, yes, I say that too. <laughs> and it's like your soul, you know, your soul has, there's a reason it's, it's something that your soul needs to, to, um, experience. Yeah. Ooh, I love this rapid fire because you're just unpacking <laughs> all types of stuff. I told you I'm a winged her. <laughs> so six, if you could have lunch with any person living or dead, who would it be? So my dream is to be interviewed by Oprah, Winf- Oprah Winfrey. I will be interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. I say I can, I will, I am. I can be interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. I will be interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. And I am being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey date to be determined. Okay. So if I were to choose one person, that would be the person I would love to have lunch with and just talk to her about everything that, you know, I used to watch super soul Sunday all the time. And that's kind of, that was my spiritual connection. And then I, you know, found Dr. Wayne Dyer and Marianne Williamson and Gabrielle Bernstein and all of these spiritual transformational leaders, and she's interviewed them all. So I want to be a part of that list (laughs) and I will be. That is super amazing. And I love how you are saying I can, I will, and I am because it reminds me of NLP. So that neuro-linguistic programming. Yes, ma'am. So I developed a seven step life timeline system of transformation, which I teach in my new book behind the screen. And it basically tells you how you can, how you can overcome your subconscious programming, but actually step in, connect to your power, your passion, and your purpose co-create, reprogram your mind, and then resonate in the energy of that, which you're trying to attract. So I'm like the master of manifestation. I like to teach the art and science of manifestation. Ooh, and we're definitely going to dive into that after this rapid fire. (laughs) So seven, oh wait, did I say seven already? I don't know. (laughs) Well, seven. Okay. Think about you're on a deserted island. They only give you X amount of dollars to spend. What would you buy? Well, if I'm on a, where am I going to buy stuff from? (laughs) There's going to be a shop there. Okay. (laughs) Um, Well, sugar snaps. I have no idea. Some food probably. I don't know. Um, What would I like anything? I don't know. But you're limited on money. I'm limited on money, but I got to buy something. Yeah. Like food or a drink, I guess. Maybe. Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay. If you could have anything in the world and money was no option, what would it be? Just unconditional love, peace, and happiness for my family and my loved ones all together that we could just enjoy our time and just just enjoy each other and just unconditional love. Nine, dream vacation. Santorini, Greece. Ooh, Santorini, Greece. I hope to go on my honeymoon there one day. Not hope, you will. (laughs) I will, thank you, Genesis. See, yes, I love it. (laughs) Yes, and then 10, you can either pass or play. And here are the rules. If you play, I ask you one more question, Carrie, if you pass, you can ask me a question that you're eager to know about me. 
Ooh, okay. So I'm going to pass. Okay, lay it on me. So Genesis, what is your passion? My passion is to make the world a better place by intersecting and connecting the dots of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and really just walking into my highest vibration and leaving the world better than I found it. Go ahead, sister. Give me a virtual hug. That was really good. (laughs) Yay. Thank you for playing rapid fire, Carrie. This was fun. Now let's dive into the book behind the scene, because then it's going to tie into all the other things that you're doing, which is helping people uncover those unconscious behaviors and patterns, peeling back that onion layer, I like to say. So what inspired you to embark embark upon the author journey and what did it look like for you? So the book's called Behind the Screen, and um, I... It took me four years to get this book written, edited, and published. So it's launching June 1st. So it's been a four-year journey. Um, Gabrielle Bernstein, actually, I think it was um, uh, Miracles, something Miracles. I can't think of Manifesting Miracles or something. Um, I read or I listened to her book on Audible, and I had been listening to a lot of Audible books by Dr. Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And I just started to learn. That's kind of when I embarked on my spiritual journey. I went out to Los Angeles and I just learned so much about myself and our power um, that we have internally. You know, I, I like to say ego versus spirit. Um, so we're spiritual beings. And when you realize that and you tap into that power, it's just amazing. So I started journaling and just kind of writing just because it made me feel good just to kind of talk about these things. And then I'm like, wow, this, I need to teach this to like kids and everything I was learning. Like I said, as an adult, like 34 to I'm 40 now. So for six, seven years, I was self-teaching myself things about psychology, quantum physics, neuroscience, the power of your mind. Um, And I was just like, I got to write this story. And so I would sit down and write and, you know, creative people, they say it wasn't me, you know, something just came through me. And that's what I was doing. I was literally typing and just the words were flowing and I was in my zone. And um, I'm just so truly passionate about this topic and teaching it because God, we need it in the world today. I mean, we've always needed it, but We need it now more than ever. And um, I, you know, mental health, May is coming mental health awareness. Mental health is so important. And I talk in my book, I tell stories about um, my parents got divorced when I was young. So I tell about the effects of divorce as a child. Um, I was in an interracial relationship and my family disowned me. Um, That relationship was a roller coaster ride. So I talk about heartbreak, family abandonment. I talk about struggling with anxiety, depression. I wanted to kill myself, you know, thoughts of suicide, um, drug and alcohol abuse that led to my moment of awakening. Um, And so within the book, you know, I weave a a way to teach this life timeline system of transformation. And it's just, it's on my heart and it's my soul. And I feel like it's my purpose for being here. And so I'm just going to rise up and talk about it and whatever I can do, get in front of as many audiences as I can to share my story, to help other people connect to their power, their passion, their purpose. That is amazing. And as you were talking, I could just hear the inner lioness roaring because your story is roaring. And it also made me think of um, the lyrics from this song that says, your story is my story. Your hope is my hope. And it is a um, Christian song. Mm -hmm. I think it comes on on a a KSBJ or um, NGEN radio. And it was so cool because you never know how someone else's story is your story, even though you may go through things differently. But some of the things that really resonated with me were the fact that you had to come to terms with your parents divorcing at a young age and the effects that it has 
on children because a lot of people don't realize how a divorce and a broken relationship can really affect younger people and they carry that trauma and that life experience with them into adulthood and sometimes it skews how they start to see their own relationship and then another thing that um, came into mind was the interracial relationship part and your family disowning you. And I feel like at the end of the day, no matter if someone is black or white, um, caramel or whatever color they are, if each one of us gets cut, we all bleed the same. So I like to ask, why the hell are we so divided by, you know, cultures and races and etc there are more commonality versus differences and you can't help who you fall in love with as long as that individual loves you for you yep and yeah and and it's like we're we're stuck in this we're conditioned we're conditioned at a young age you know whether it's your parents your caretakers your teachers whoever you're around and i talk a lot about um the difference between your conscious and subconscious mind. And Dr. Bruce Lipton explains from zero to seven years old, kids, their brain, this is a supercomputer, okay? Right here between our ears, it's a supercomputer that humanity has not learned how to tap into and use at all. I mean, really. So, you know, I give people the benefit of the doubt and say 10% of the time you might be conscious, but 90% of the time it's your subconscious program that is operating you. So we're basically supercomputers walking around on autopilot and we follow what we were taught and we are taught to not question or, you know, just this is the way it's supposed to be, but why, who said it was supposed to be that way? Um, and so I've always been the person that'll walk the other way. Like if I don't agree with something, I'm not going to follow you. I'll find my own way. And I think that, you know, we're all, he gosh, we, we just need to love each other and stop the hate and stop just all of the conflict because it's driven by the ego right? And if and the ego speaks loudest and it always speaks first, but you can override the ego when you connect to your power and that's your spirit. It's your soul. It's, it's your life giving purpose of why you're here. And so many people are seeking that, but don't know how to find it because we're conditioned. Absolutely. And I always tell people, if you take time to really do the inner work and go within yourself versus relying on those external factors and those voices, then you really start to encompass who you are and who you were created to be. If you don't know who you are, you're going to be a victim versus a victor. And the relationship that was in racial, was that the nine year roller coaster relationship that you preface it in rapid fire? Yes. Okay. And then uh, by any chance, is that the father of your son? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Do you want to add something there, Carrie? <laughs> no, I, you know, I talk about, you know, my awakening and my son was my awakening. It was like a light. As soon as he was born, I say a big light bulb went on. And I just, I just knew that I could do anything because I now had this life and this just unconditional love. And I can't wait for you to experience that too, because it's amazing. It just, it's life changing when you have a child and just you, you, I, I could move mountains. That is amazing. And I'm glad that your son is a pivotal part of your life and helps you awaken because whenever you have a little person that came from you, your world shifts and it changes for the better. And there are so many people out there who are dying to have kids, but they mm -hmm. can't. And mm -hmm. whenever you see somebody who has a child and multiple children and they just abuse that child, it's very um, disheartening. Mm -hmm. And so let's jump back into more of your story. So after you got over that um, relationship, you got over, you know, the abandonment, you went through alcoholism and et cetera. What really led you to naming your book Behind the Screen? Because it's almost like whenever I hear the title, I think of a screen door and you're looking behind the screen doors, but you can't really see clear because the screen door is your blinder. Yeah. So the screen is your lens of life. Okay. So how we perceive other people and how we perceive ourselves, um, And it's, you know, 
it, it's, it's really perception, right? Because your perception creates your reality. And the screen is also like your subconscious program. So I teach about the life timeline system of transformation. What's your life timeline? It's from birth until today. So for that many years, we've accumulated memories, experiences, emotions, all of these things, right? And our subconscious is that autopilot computer program. So your brain, this supercomputer here has electrical signals. So it's electromagnetic, mind, heart, electromagnetic. Everything in the universe is electromagnetic because everything's energy. And when you start to realize that, then you can use it and you can work with it. And it's like a science. Um, see, I told you I'll go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> um, so what was the question? So behind the screen is really, I think too many people hide behind this screen, whatever screen you want to perceive it as we hide in a depression or an anxious state or whatever we're dealing with. Maybe, you know, I say, you know, you could have the, you, you might see a family on Facebook or social media that you just perceive as being so happy and they have all their kids and they live in a million dollar house and have all this money and people behind the screen will say, oh, wow, I wish I had that life. When you don't realize they probably just had their biggest fight ever right before the photographer snapped the picture of this perfect family that you're perceiving. But see, we too often we judge and, and we perceive others based on our own circumstances and our subconscious programming, but all of that, none of it matters. So if we could just peel back the layers, right. Of, of the programming of all that you went through, because if I suffered as a young person in a relationship, then I built walls. And this is, I'm, I'm talking personally, I built so many walls around my heart because I was, I was broken inside. My heart was broken. And so you have to figure out how to pull yourself together and how to get stronger, put your big girl panties on and move on. Right. And that's, that's not always easy. Some people stay, stay there stuck. And then they attract the same type of relationship. So we don't realize that the subconscious program follows us into adulthood. And until we realize it and become conscious, the first step is awareness, is to become aware that this is a program. So these behavior patterns that I'm exhibiting in my relationships now, um, I picked up, I picked these up along the way to survive, but now they might not be aiding in my growth. They might be limiting my growth. So I have to become aware of that so that I can override the program get behind the screen and clean it and clear it, right? Release suppressed emotions. Like there's so much, I can't wait. I can't wait for this book to be released on June 1st <laughs> so the world can read it. There's a good. lot. And I just, as you were talking, I think about the veil. Whenever you're getting married, for those who wear the veil, you have to un um, uncover the veil or you have to take off the facade and the mask in order to really see clearly because there's you're not going to be able to see what you want to see if there are certain things that are limiting you and sometimes I'll use like my glasses as an analogy like if I take off my glasses I can tell that I'm talking to Carrie but I can't make out her physical features because I don't have my glasses on but when I put them back on everything comes back into focus and I'm able to regain that clarity based on where I'm looking at so Carrie I want you to walk through the seven steps um, that are in your book and I know you said the first one was awareness so I'll give you five because okay. I'm not going to give all seven. Okay. <laughs> you got to get the book for that. So the first step is awareness. So you have to become conscious. You have to become aware that you have a program, um, but you're also becoming conscious of these behavior patterns or these self-sabotaging habits. Um, you know, I talk a lot about drugs and alcohol and there's addictions and it could be social media. It could be gambling. It could be shopping. It could be emotional eating. It's whatever will fill the void, right? So you have to realize I'm trying to fill this void. Okay, why do I have a void? So that's step one, become aware. 
Step two is go back and remember. So this goes back to your subconscious programming. At what point in my life timeline did I um, exhibit this type of feeling, thinking, or observe this type of behavior? Most often you'll go back before 18 years old. It's somewhere in your childhood that you picked up maybe as a teenager, these certain tendencies, ways of thinking or feeling. So you have to go back and remember it. Step three is you have to feel it. Okay. Because we don't process emotions. This is what we need to teach in school, emotional intelligence and how to process the emotions that you feel. Because most often, if they're not good emotions, we suppress them and we try to drown them out. And how do we drown them out? Drugs, alcohol, emotional eating, sex, whatever, gambling, all of the things. So you have to go back and you have to feel those because you probably didn't process that energy, energy in motion, emotion, energy in motion, or it's stuck, right? So you have to feel it. Step four is you have to flip it. It's not always that bad, right? So I do think, like I said, there's reasons for the season. Um, you know, you have to flip it and try to see what was there that I maybe learned from this, or is there a silver lining? Is there some type of good? So it's flip the perspective and try to see it from a different perspective or from someone else's perspective. So that's step four. Step five is release it. And I, and I explain all the ways that you can release suppressed emotions in the now. So the present moment is the gift. It's the holy instant. It's the gift of life. This present moment is all we have. So when you become conscious in the present, you can make changes. But if you live in the past or you live in the future, you're not really experiencing the gift of life right now. The power that's breathing you, the, the what you get to feel and experience. Um, so those are that's the five out of seven steps of the lifetime line system of transformation. Now, step six and seven is like, oh, come on, let's go. You got to get the book to learn more. <laughs> Ooh, so what we did was just give them a teaser so we could give them what to look forward in the book by giving them those five steps. So if they can make it through um, steps one through five, then they could definitely make it through step six to seven. But in order to find out what step six and seven are, they have to get the book. So I, I love how you build that up there, Carrie. And as we begin to wind down our segment, I want you to leave the listeners with your call to action. What is it that you want them to do or what's a challenge that you want them to go and take in order so they can level up and start transforming their life um, by changing their inner working, reprogramming who they are at, it, at their core, and then manifesting it externally. Because I tell people, just like our phones, we have to upgrade the software time to time, and we have to, you know, download new programming in order for our operating systems to be um, optimal and functional. Yeah. So um, I think the, what I'm going to leave the listeners with is to start to become conscious of your program. Everybody has a program. It shows up for all of us. You know, maybe you get angry. Maybe you scream at your kids, you know, maybe you get, um, you have a resentment and someone comes into your life and you're just uncomfortable. There's so many of these unconscious behavior patterns, but when you realize that you can change it because you can't change anyone else, the only person you can change is you. And so maybe you have to change the way you look at situations. Maybe you have to um, gain more control over your emotions and stop being so emotionally reactive, which is one of my problems because I'm an empath. I feel I'm energy. Like I, I exude energy, but I also take other people's energy. So you have to, you have to learn what it is. What can I do? to make my life better and have a more positive impact on others around me, my children, because as parents, we don't realize there are mirrors. So they pick up all of our bad habits or tendencies. So we want to make this world a better place. I want to help raise human consciousness. What does that mean? Become more aware, become more aware of the power that you have inside of yourself and how you can transform that and then externally, you have a ripple effect within the universe. So my book is called Behind the Screen. It's launching June 1st. It'll be available on Amazon. You can visit my website. It's carrie-schmidt.com. So C-A-R-R-I-E hyphen S-C-H-M-I-D-T.com. And um, 
the, the book actually has a complimentary lifetime line journal. So not only do you learn about just stories that I wouldn't even tell my best friend. <laughs> I mean, I really let down the walls. It's real and uncut. It's, it's, it's raw. Um, but I also teach a system of transformation. So as you read the book, you'll learn the system, but you can also take notes in the journal. And then after the book, I offer a 12 week coaching program to master your mindset and heal your soul which basically takes those seven steps much deeper because you can read about it, but it's the actual application and it's the reprogramming your mind and gaining the confidence to take the action that maybe you haven't done yet, but you can do now because right now is all you have. So take action. Absolutely. And Carrie, now that we know how they can reach you via your website, where do you primarily hang out on social media? I'm on uh, Facebook. So my um, Facebook is at Coach Carrie Schmidt and Instagram. And my Instagram is at Care Bear Schmidt. My nickname's Care Bear. So it's Care Bear Schmidt on Instagram. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get into, I need to do TikTok. I did one, <laughs> but I got to upgrade my, uh, I got to upgrade my operating system and learn that software too. <laughs> you got to stay up to date these days. Yes, it's a lot of softwares. So listeners and viewers, make sure you're on the lookout for Carrie's book that's dropping on June 1st behind the screen. She gave you five out of the seven steps to transform your life and then connect with her on social media and head on over to her website to learn more about the incredible things that she's doing. And um, I also wanna challenge you to share this segment with a family member, a friend, or someone that needs to level up in their life. And don't forget to subscribe. We're on 40 plus platforms. You could also follow us on YouTube at GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp for all things video content. And lastly, but not least, we are currently ranked in the top 3% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com. And we're looking for brand sponsors. Space is limited. So head on over to genesisamariskemp.net, click the drop down and go to the podcast tab so you can find out how you can become a sponsor and continue to fuel the mission of GEMS, which is to educate, inspire, and motivate while we bridge the gap for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day and go take the challenge to reprogram your internal software.